In this lesson, we'll take a look at a differentiation rule called the chain rule. And what the chain rule is used for is differentiating functions when you actually have a function of a function. It's called a composite function. And the example on this page, f of x, is 64x to 6 raised to the power of 2 thirds. So this is what I mean by a function of a function. Inside these brackets, the 64x to 6 is called an inner or inside function. It's like a whole function of itself. And then that function, whatever it is, is raised to the power of 2 thirds. So the power of 2 thirds is another function. So that's what I mean by a function of a function. It's kind of like we have x to the power of 2 thirds, and then in place of the x, we have 64x to the 6. Now, I'm going to show how to differentiate this without using the chain rule, just to verify the chain rule does work as an example of it. But most of the time, you won't be able to get around using the chain rule when you have a function of a function. In this case, you can't. So, I'm going to evaluate 64x to the 2 thirds, and then multiply it by x to the 6 raised to the 2 thirds. Now, when you have 64 raised to 2 thirds, that's just a numerical amount. The power of 2 thirds means this. Uh, the 3 in the denominator means the roots. We're taking the cube root of 64. And the numerator, the 2, means you're squaring that. Now, I don't have to do that with the x to the power of 6, because I'm just going to use a little bit of algebra to simplify this. We have a power of a power. We multiply the exponents. The 64 wasn't written as a power, so that's why I'm not doing that with the 64. So the cube root of 64 is six is, is sorry is four because four cubed is 64, and then that four gets raised to the power of two. I almost said a moment ago is 16. So cube root of 64 is four. Four squared is 16. Now when you multiply, uh, when you have a power of a power, you multiply the exponent. So we're multiplying six by two thirds, and that looks like this. We have six times two thirds. Remember, the 6 is the same as having the denominator 1, so we actually get 6 times 2 is 12, and over 1 times 3 is 3, which of course simplifies to 4. So that's why we have x to the 4th here. So that's our function. Now we can just differentiate it using the power rule. 4 comes down and multiplies by 16 to give us 64 and we decrease the exponent by 1, the 4th becomes a 3. So that's the derivative, 64x cubed. Now, I'm going to show how the chain rule works here. So first of all, I'm going to, tell, I'm going to define or uh, state what the inside function and outside function are, because you need to define those for the chain rule to work. So the inside function, I'm going to call it h of x, and it's this 64x to the 6 here. And then that's raised to the power of 2 thirds. So that's what my other function is. I'm going to call g of x the raising to the power of 2 thirds function. So it's x to the 2 thirds. And we're going to differentiate both of those. You need both derivatives in order to uh, use the chain rule. So h prime would be, and we're just using the power rule, uh, 6 times 64 is 384, and decrease the exponent by 1. We'll do the same thing for uh, g prime of x. We bring the 2 thirds down in front, x to the power of, and we subtract 1 from the 2 thirds. That is negative a third. Now, the chain rule actually looks like this. And I'll talk about it in more detail, a little bit more detail on the next page. It's g prime of h of x. So we're evaluating the derivative of the outer function, evaluated not just at x, but at the inside function. So it's like I'm substituting the whole 64x to 6 in place of x here. And then I multiply by h prime of x. h prime of x is the 384x to the fifth. So g prime is 2 thirds x to the negative a third. So 2 thirds. This is the x, because we're evaluating it at h of x, so the 64x to the 6 goes in place of x here, raised to the power of negative a third, times h prime of x. h prime of x is the 384x to the fifth. There's the 384x to the fifth. So once again here, g prime of h of x means this is the derivative of g, but instead of x, it's evaluated at h of x. So we have a 64x to the 6 here instead of just a plain old x. Now, the power of negative a third, well, the negative means the reciprocals. That's why it's underneath 1. The power of a third means the cube root. So we're taking the cube root of 64x to the 6. That's what we have written right here. Now, the cube root of 64, is, again, is 4, because 4 cubed is 64. And we're taking the, when we're taking the cube root of x to the 6, you divide 6 by 3 to get 2. So it's x squared. Cube root of x to the 6 is x squared. Now, when we multiply this together, 
We're multiplying the two thirds by one over four. I'm just doing the numerical part first. So two times one, of course, is two, and three times four is 12, and that reduces to one over six. So that's why we get one over six x squared. So two thirds times a quarter is one over six x squared. And then we're multiplying by the 384 x to the fifth. Uh, 6 divides into 384 64 times, so that's where the 64 comes from. And x to the 5th divided by x squared, we subtract the exponents, uh, 5 minus 2 is 3, so we do get 64x to the 3rd. So it does work. This is just an example that the chain rule does work. So most of the time you will not be able to simplify like this and then differentiate and not use the chain rule. So this is the statement on the second page of the chain rule. It says if f of x equals g of h of x, so there's the composite function or function of a function. And to find f prime, you evaluate g prime at h of x at the inner function. So the derivative of the outer function evaluate at the inner function. Notice there's no prime here, just h of x. And you multiply by h prime, the derivative of the inner function, the derivative of what was inside here. Now another way to write the chain rule says if y equals f of u and u equals g of x. So since u equals g of x, it's kind of like having this g of x in here and then it looks just like it does up here. It's a composite function. So in order to find the derivative of y with respect to x, which is dy dx, it's dy du, which is the derivative of this function with respect to u, times du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x. Now notice that dy dx, this is dy, this is dx here. Um, notice that it's kind of like these du's divide out. They don't actually. It's, I guess, a nice way to remember how to write it, but they don't actually. dy du is actually one symbol. It's not dy divided by du, and the same with du dx. It's one symbol. It's not actually a du divided by a dx, but it is a good way, I suppose, to remember it. So the derivative of this variable with respect to this variable is dy d whatever they have in common, which is the u here in this case, times du dx. So that's a, another way to write the chain rule.